Hi, I'm Lucy Bosher. Welcome to my haven of love. Hi, I'm Jules Ralston. I'm the editor of fashionnz.co.nz. Today we're talking with young Auckland designer Lucy Bouchier. Hi Lucy. Hi. Tell us about um, the Lucy Bouchier business and the label. Um, the Lucy Bouchier business is all about confidence and having fun. Um, it's about colour and not taking the fashion industry too seriously. Now you've got a store in Nuffield Street. Yeah. And this is the sole place that people can buy Lucy Bouchier? At the moment, yes. With plans for um, international cities? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Lucy, you studied fashion at Whitecliffe. And then at the tender age of 18, you went to work for the then iconic Patrick Steele. Mm. Tell us all about that. I left school early and went to Whitecliffe to, to get into fashion, really. And then I think when I was at Whitecliffe, I was just in a rush. There were lots of people doing their first year courses, and I just wanted to get into fashion. It was kind of all I ever wanted to do. And I met Patrick while I was studying there. He was teaching my fashion illustration class. and. I went to talk to him about how to get into the industry faster and he offered me a job so. What did you take particularly from your time with him? Oh everything. Um, I think mainly he just inspired me a lot. Um, he's just so talented and so passionate and I think he was doing something that nobody else was doing. I think he is definitely one of our, well, our most talented designer we've ever had. He pushes the boundaries a lot more than what I think a lot of our designers do at the moment. Certainly, um, he too is a man who's not afraid of colour, huh? No, yeah, his clothes are about sex and they should be. <laughs> Lucy, um, you, your career had a bit of a, a stumbling block when um, just three weeks after you opened your first store in Kingsland, mm. you were burgled and it was a day before you planned to take out insurance and they took $15,000 yeah. worth of stock. How does a young woman recover from such a big emotional and financial blow? Yeah, I was devastated actually. It was kind of um, my dream to open the shop and I'd finally got there and I finally opened and I was absolutely heartbroken. <laughs> but I had a lot of support from family and industry leaders and just random strangers and I think I've always had that kind of, I don't know, the spirit to keep going and to get over it, and I did. So what's been the high point of your career to date? I think opening the first shop, definitely. Realising that, I think just being able to, to know that I, I had finally gotten started, it seemed like it had taken so long. I'd, start, I'd wanted to do this since I was about six years old, and finally to open it, it was just like, oh, what a relief, <laughs> I can do it. Now, you've mm. got some really, um, vibrant messages you want to share with the women of the world. Yes. Tell us about those. <laughs> the first one's definitely to wear more colour and to just, to try to get New Zealand women particularly to be more confident. I think that they're very, um, very nervous here and scared to be out there and scared to be trying and scared to be different. And there's so much fear based around clothes. And it's just for fun. It's just should be something that expresses yourself and I don't know, you look at like Carrie Bradshaw from Sex and the City, she was so out there and so fabulous, they all were. And I think that that's what I'm trying to get New Zealand women to feel, is that inner confidence where they just exuded. Now, you've achieved a lot for a young woman and you've got some strong ideas and you're not afraid to share them. What makes Lucy Brochier the woman that she is? I think when I first got into the fashion industry, I like when I first opened that first shop, I was just designing clothes. That's all it was about. It was just about me being able to design my beautiful clothes. And that was it. And then I, I got more into the PR side of it and more into the media side of it. And the fashion industry is really screwed up. There is so much sadness and so much pain and agony that is, I think, that is caused by the fashion industry and no one's standing up for it. And I think that it's that that drives me. I feel like if I don't do something about it, I'm just another designer who, who's doing nothing. And I think I've just had enough. And 
have your parents or your upbringing or your partner had anything to do with this this um, sense of conviction that you have? I don't think so. I think I just born with it. I don't know. I guess so. And I've just seen lots. I mean, we had a girl in here a little while ago, and I asked her to do some modelling, and she. I hadn't seen her for about six months. She came in here and she was just skin and bones and she wanted to be a model and I was just like, that's what I'm causing? Fuck. <laughs> that's not cool. <laughs> Lucy, there was quite a bit of controversy around the poster that you um, circulated just prior to um, in New Zealand Fashion Week this oh. year. I must admit when I first looked at it I thought it was brave, but the more I've looked, um, the more <laughs> I enjoy it. And um, I think that your openness about the connection between sex and fashion is really refreshing. Some designers seem to be quite coy about that even though it's there all the time. That seems to be a pretty strong part of your message. I think so. I think it's just about being open about it and not being shy about it because at the end of the day, what else is it? It's clothes to make you look good, make you feel good and sexuality is such a huge part of that. And I believe you might have a slightly more subversive poster in I the do. wings. <laughs> Should I tell you about it? Give us a little spoiler. Um, it's basically about a... It's another sort of animated looking poster, so it's not obviously anything real. And you draw um, these yourself? I draw them myself, yeah. And it's um, of a 12-year-old model and she's got a, got a school uniform on and her skirt's pulled up and she's on the floor. Snorting Now what yes. about the mums who bring their daughters here to buy $800 school Well, I think ball that gowns. they should be happy about it. I mean, basically it's taking the piss of of young girls being exploited. It's, I, you know, I think there's a huge correlation between um, child abuse and the fashion industry. They're just children. They're using 12-year-old models as models and it's just ridiculous. Sure. It's crazy. So mums, rest assured, um, Lucy's not trying to corrupt your girls, she's trying to, as I understand it, bring to light some yeah, of the, the corruption and the... I think just being open about it, just putting it out there and going, this is how it is, stop ignoring it. For women who haven't got access to Lucy Boucher, the store, mm. how's it going to get the Lucy Boucher look this summer? I think it's just... Again, having the confidence of wearing lots of colour and um, I'd probably go to op shops and vintage stores, maybe some outrageous sort of chain stores. When I was younger, um, with my sister, we used to go to trashy chain stores and we'd see who could dress the best for like, you know, the cheapest price. And it's really fun and it's easy to do. I think that if you've got, a, got style and you've got the confidence and, you know, you can, you can totally have fun and, and look good for cheap. And it'd be fair to add that Lucy Boucher gal probably has curled her lashes and um, shaved her legs and painted her toenails. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Viewers, you can have a look at Lucy's uh, viral marketing video clip from the link on this site. Thanks so much, Lucy. I'm the last